Another tech name that's getting a lot of attention today, and that's the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, surging about 80% after its debut just a moment or just a few moments ago. It's up about 76% now. Startup uses cloud technology to detect and thwart attempted cybersecurity breaches and first identified Russian ties to the DNC breach during the 2016 presidential campaign. Joining us now in a first on CNBC interview, CrowdStrike co-founder and CEO George Kurtz. George, congratulations on the IPO. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So, uh, company, the IPO priced at $34 last night with the stock surging more than 75% right now. Do you think it was priced right? Well, we'll let the market dictate the pricing. I think what we're focused on is really building long-term value for shareholders and obviously making sure that our customers are protected. And that's the way we built the business, focusing on preventing breaches for our customers. All right, so in terms of what CrowdStrike does, first cloud-native endpoint protection platform built to stop breaches. What does that mean, and how does it differentiate you, this company from what is really a growing uh, list of other cybersecurity firms? Well, I think what, fun what is fundamentally different is that we really built the first cloud platform for security. When you think about Workday and ServiceNow and Salesforce, there really hasn't been a, f a foundational cloud platform for security, and that was one of our goals when Dimitri and I started the company in 2011. This cloud platform has allowed us to uh, stop breaches and to, to scale uh, different modules that really hit a specific customer need, and uh, it's been well received by our customers. Now, it's a subscription-based product. To what degree is it just, uh, I guess, tapping into an existing set of tools that allows these companies and you to detect breaches, or how much do you have to constantly either customize what you do uh, or kind of for forever revise and enhance uh, these uh, detection tools to stay ahead uh, of these breach steps? I guess I'm trying to get it to what degree this is just a plug into the network and it scales really well, or is it a constant spy versus spy game? Well, it it's, it's really uh, uh, runs on your endpoint or computer or your server or workload in the cloud. And what we found in the past with traditional antivirus as an example, we do way more than that, is that signature-based technologies were just not capable of stopping breaches. So a big part of our platform is actually collecting data at scale. We collect a trillion events per week. We use that data to train our machine learning algorithms, and we can identify attacks and breaches that have never been seen before at the speed of the network. And this crowdsourcing as aspect, which is the crowd and CrowdStrike, really has enabled us to identify these attacks that are causing the most damage to large and small organizations around the globe. And they just haven't been able to do that with traditional, I call fossilized, uh, uh, vendors that are on the, uh, in the market. This architecture has really changed the game for us. So, George, you're using AI for good, right? Yes. Keeping companies safe and protecting them, securing parts of the Internet. The flip side of that is when AI is used for devious purposes or, or, or negative purposes, right? Deep fake being a great example. You have this Mark Zuckerberg video, this deep fake video that is circulating on Facebook right now, for example. Uh, how how much of a threat is deep fake coming into the 2020 presidential elections and beyond? How do you prevent it? How do you counter it? Well, obviously, security is uh, an evolving area. Adversaries continue to change their tactics. And I think the, uh, the good part about AI is that you can evolve it to identify these sort of threats, uh, no matter if it's stealing intellectual property or, or credit card information or uh, breaking in and destroying data on someone's computer. So I think what's important to realize is that at cloud scale and, and, and the way we operate, we have the ability to uh, take all this data, synthesize it, and provide the best pr protection and prevention me methodologies for our customers. I'm going to send it down to John Fort, who I think has a question for you, George, sure. as well. Hi. Uh, I'm curious about your sales and marketing costs, which are uh, falling as a percentage of revenue, but still considerable. How do you see uh, those costs either stabilizing or maybe even eventually going down as you grow CrowdStrike? Well, one of the things that we focus on is strong, strong unit economics. And if you look at our growth rates and what we're spe spending on sales and marketing, we've been actually very efficient in that area. Security, and in our particular area, it's really a greenfield opportunity. There's a lot of frustration with the incumbent vendors. So our sales and marketing spend has really been focused on capturing market share and delivering our solution into uh, geographies that you know, we haven't been in or into verticals that we didn't have the, the penetration when we first started the company. So uh, we feel comfortable with the unit economics and we feel comfortable 
uh, uh, with the marketing spend uh, given where we are as a company. What should we measure to understand how the crowd part of CrowdStrike is getting more effective, that crowdsourcing? Um, how are you going to get that crowd bigger? Well, it's really all about the data, and you hear a lot about AI, and AI is great, but it has to be used in the right ways, and it's not a, a panacea. So it's, it's easy to come up with an algorithm, but it's really hard to collect this data at scale and be able to train these AI algorithms. And this is really one of the things that we spent a lot of time on, is building a very scalable architecture to get this data in. Uh, we call it into our threat graph, which is uh, one of the most... Uh, advanced uh, security databases around and it really allows us to get better efficacy and lower false positive rates in detecting these breaches so uh, in my view it's all about the data and we we'll continue to, to get more and more data it's that network effect and our threat graph gets smarter the more data we actually consume George I want to get your thoughts on on the broader threat landscape right now uh, I know the company came out with a report earlier in the year that noted that there was an increase in Chinese hacking activity last year in the midst of U.S.-China trade tensions. Have you seen that continue? Oh, much longer and than also, we have. And also along those lines, does it make sense for the U.S. to be labeling Huawei as a national security threat? Well, when we look at the threats, uh, whether it's a nation state, whether it's an e-crime group, obviously the threats are evolving and they're, and they're rapid. Uh, it, there's hundreds of thousands of new pieces of malware that come out every day. And uh, it's incumbent on companies to be able to protect themselves. And uh, it's just been an area that's been underserved because most of the existing technologies have fo focused on stopping malware instead of stopping breaches, which is, again, part, part of our core mission. John, I think you had another question uh, as well, right? I do. Thanks, Morgan. George, uh, <laughs> there's maybe no category of tech stocks that runs hot and cold like security stocks. I'm wondering, I want your thoughts on that and what investors should really focus on metrics-wise to understand the health of the business versus uh, the hype? Sure. Uh, if you look in the past, uh, there's been a lot of point product companies that have come out and tried to solve a specific problem. Uh, but if you just step back, the problem that most companies are trying to solve is not being breached. And whether that's uh, you know, network technology or endpoint mm -hmm. technology, at the end of the day, we see the tip of the breach being the endpoint. That's where the data uh, resides the servers, the endpoints, the desktops, and that's what we're protecting. Uh, so from that standpoint, if you look back in history, there really hasn't been a foundational cloud company born from the ground up in the cloud. There's been no Salesforce of security. And we think we've taken the right approach and created the right architecture to be that, that fourth pillar of cloud computing. Uh, and that's you know, one of the areas that I, I think gets our customers most excited. It's the ability to rapidly install our technology, just have it work, and uh, be able to scale with us and, and, and use different modules with that single agent architecture. Uh, it's made their lives a lot easier, and as I like to say, you know, it just works for them, and uh, that's what customers are looking for.